How many people in this room have heard about the Lawful Bank? Okay. The Lawful Bank dot com. Okay. The problem that we all are suffering from is greedy bankers. Yeah. We have a banking system that is basically just a casino banking system. And as a direct consequence of it, we are being pushed onto a treadmill to pay taxes, ever more increasing taxes and fines and penalty fines and so on and so forth, because they need more money. And what's happening is the more and more people who are getting on the greedy treadmill, the more and more money they need from us to feed them. Okay? And, and that's the issue at the moment. We know the system's going to collapse. We don't know exactly when, but we know it's getting near. Um, and obviously, we, we, we sort of give advice to people as, as far as, as what they can do to, to ease their situation. Um, people have mentioned, make sure you've got spare food in the house, that sort of thing. But I don't want to focus on that. What I want to explain to you is that the solution to the problem is our own monetary system. And the lawful bank is the start towards that. Um, what is a monetary system? Okay, it's, if we take this room as a community, and if we assume that we have all the resources that we need to live our lives normally, food, petrol, etc. Um, the money would just be a, a tool to allow us to exchange those resources. It is of no value whatsoever. Yeah? That's the basic format for, for money, is to allow us to exchange our resources. So if we create our own monetary system, the one thing that we need to make our monetary system work are the resources. So in order to find the resources, we need a critical mass of people. And what we're doing with the Lawful Bank is we're as asking people to sign up to the Lawful Bank so we can start building our numbers. And when we have sufficient numbers, we can literally just create our own monetary system. It, it really is as simple as that. It, in, in all the things that we are doing, the one thing I keep saying to people is all we need is the numbers. It's numbers, numbers, numbers. So the ongoing situation with the lawful bank is this. At some point in the future, we'll be able to actually launch our bank. And this is the way it will work. If you bring £100 into our bank, we will actually, using the fractional reserve system, give you £1,000 worth of credit. Okay? Now, we will take the £100 of their money and we will retire it. And we will create our own currency. And we're hoping to be able to use that currency in our local retailers. And if the local retailer says, is this worth anything? We say, yes, it is. We can actually exchange that for one of theirs. So we build confidence in our currency. And on the back of that confidence, we'll, be, we'll build uh, confidence in our system. Okay? The, the reason we're using fractional reserve banking is because any system of currency, in order to, to, um, to work, it needs liquidity. So you bring £100 in, we will create £1,000 worth of credit, and that puts positive liquidity into the system. Now, can you do that? That's what they do. Okay? The difference between what we will be doing versus what they do, when they create the liquidity out of um, using fractional reserve banking, they take control of the money and they lend it out. And that's where their wealth is being created on the back of interest. What we do is we give it to you. Okay, so we will actually create the liquidity and that will be yours to use. Now, what's the point of liquidity if you can't spend it? And that's the key point, isn't it? The secret is to be able to spend that liquidity. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up escrow accounts for the gas companies, the electricity companies, the water companies, and the council tax. Yeah? So when you get your council tax bill or your electricity bill or your water bill, or your gas bill, you'll be able to pay those through the escrow account and settle that bill. And when they say to you, well, you haven't paid your bill, you can say, well, yes, I have. Here's my bank statement says so. And they're going to say, well, hang on a minute. That money's just been created out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, we're, and we're going to say, and we are going to say to them, guess what? So is yours. Now, what effectively we are doing is we are actually going to be taking back control of a resource. My belief is that gas, water, electricity are essentials, right? We should not be paying profits to foreign corporations for essentials. Our government should be providing that. 
because we need it. It's an essential part of our, 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 our lifestyle, our requirements, okay? So I believe that the people will get behind the concept of us taking back control of our natural resources, yeah? So that's the process that we're, we're looking at in terms of developing the, the, um, the, the reserve, sorry, the fractional reserve system. Okay, so um, in terms of businesses, mortgages, we'll be able to provide mortgages interest-free. Um, we'll be able to, to provide loans to businesses interest-free. We'll be able to provide loans for cars and, and essentials interest-free. Now, when you borrow money to buy an asset, you have to pay it back. The problem with the system that we have at the moment is they've lent it out willy-nilly without um, securities, proper securities, and it's also the interest. Effectively, um, the system itself is, is, is a constantly increasing monetary system, a constant supply of, of money because of the interest. Our system wouldn't encourage that. So we're able to provide that, that mechanism. Now, if we're looking at um, the idea that we've paid all of our um, bills to the electricity company, etc., we're inviting them to use our system as opposed to the other system. And if they turn around and say, well, how are we going to spend the money? We will say, well, actually, you can use the money to pay your employees. So you can actually use our money. And why would your employees want to use the money or our system? And the answer is because we can provide them with mortgages interest-free. And there is no good reason why you shouldn't use our system versus their system, because our system it benefits the people, whereas the other system benefits the greedy bankers. Now, can you imagine the word going round about our new system, our new banking system, and the benefits that it's giving to the people? And can you imagine what politicians are going to be saying when, when the people start saying, what do you believe you should be doing? Do you think you should be supporting the people system or the banking system? What do you think the politicians are going to be saying? Well, we know who they're working for, don't we? But what about the next elections? The, the, the dynamics of, of the whole situation are going to be quite interesting. So we need to spread the message about the lawful bank. We need to get the numbers signed up. And at some point in time, we'll have enough people to be able to launch our own banking system. And I can promise you they're going to be very, very nervous about that. Now, the actual mechanism of the banking system itself is quite straightforward in so much as local communities can set up their own branches. The local branches will have their own representative. We'll have a committee of 100. And the committee of 100 will actually make recommendations um, and they will pass the recommendations down to the members who will vote on it. So we'll have a constitution. The committee of 100 will hire and fire the people who will actually run the system, and the people who run the system will run it in accordance to the Constitution. So it's not top-down, it's bottom-up. So it's a people's bank controlled by the people for the people. And that might sound a bit glib, but I think it's a pretty realistic scenario. In the beginning, Abraham Lincoln, President Kennedy, I want them to be told, they were all shot, they were all killed because they tried to assert the bank's cartel. It's been my stone. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question. It, it's a very important point. So let me cover the key points. First and foremost, you've asked about you know, the safety of any individual setting up a new bank account. The, the lawful bank, I have got nothing to do with the lawful bank. Okay? It's being organized by other people. Um, there are other similar banking things being set up now, so you can, you can shoot me in the head. It's got nothing to do with me, okay? And the other thing, of course, is because it's each individual branch is, will be operated by half a dozen people. Half a dozen people can set up their own branch. Um, they, they could have 100 members or they could have 500 members, whatever. We're anticipating thousands of branches all over the UK. And each one of those branches is owned locally, it's autonomous, and it can't be controlled by the, you know, the, 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 the organization, as it were. So it's controlled locally. So they've got a problem because they have to deal with every single individual branch. And anybody can open a branch subject to the, to, to the security criteria. Okay? So, so as one fails or, or, or succeeds on its own merits, another one will start. So, so you've got a constantly changing network of... of, of uh, of, of branches, okay? Now, as far as the electricity companies, and they turn around and say, well, we'll cut off the electricity. I want you to imagine this scenario. 
we're talking about a minimum numbers. We're talking about a critical mass. When you've got a million people who have decided to actually pay the electricity through an escrow account, and if you've got a million people who've got their own peace officers, because we are talking alternative governance, we are setting up our own courts, we're setting up our own peace officers, we're setting up our own bailiffs, okay? If they come knocking on our door, if the bailiffs come knock, knocking on our door, we will, we will meet them and greet them and we'll say, listen, listen guys, go away because we don't recognize your authority. Now that's already happening. I, what's happening now with the bailiffs is they're, they're walking away. They won't knock on my door. And I'm not using violence. With, we, we will not use violence. We use the logic of what we, we're doing, which is the rule of law, to impose upon them the facts that they have no right, these foreign companies have no rights to our resources. Now, you know, the, the logic of Bayless, they've got gas spills, they've got mortgages. I believe that we can, make, we can impress upon them that what we're doing is for everyone's benefit. Okay? We're also prepared to defend anyone in the courts, if the, if the electricity company want to, and remember, they've got to take it to court. They can't just switch your gas or electricity off. And by the way, it's against your human rights as well. We will, we will defend. We'll have our own system of, of defense. Um, lawyers will call them what you will to, de to defend. But the other key point about it is we will see them in, in the courts, but we will see them in our courts, common law courts, right? Because we know that the system of courts they've got in place at the moment are not lawful. So we challenge them at every angle. Okay, but remember, this is about numbers, and there's a million people all doing the same thing. We will close their system down. Why wouldn't they use our system with all the benefits entailed? Again, the logic is that they potentially will do so. All right, well, I, I think that sort of covers most of the, the general gist of, of what the Lawful Bank is all about. Are there any questions about either the court situation or the Lawful Bank concept? All right, well, what, what an escrow account is, is that once you've paid the money out of your account, it goes into a, an escrow account, it's available for the, that company to use, subject to the terms and conditions that you attach to it, right? And what we would do is we, we would simply say that they, those, those companies can use that money simply just by signing up to the system, it's available to them. What we can say is that you no longer have the money, you can legitimize um, your, your claim that you've paid it because you have a documentation that proves you paid that money and we can actually confirm it because our banking system will say, well, that's actually right. The money is available in this account for you. Yeah. Steve, go. Uh, isn't, um, isn't there some kind of similarity between the Lawful Bank and, well, to me, what you, you spoke about, there's a definite similarity to credit unions. Yeah. 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 The difference, credit unions do not use fractional reserve banking. The benefit of fractional reserve banking with no interest and with secure loans is it pumps positive liquidity into the system. So our system would have positive liquidity and their system would, have, would be a debt-based system. And you, you've got to imagine this, that people are going to say, well, hang on a minute, what, 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 what did you say that if I take £100 from that bank and put it into your bank, you're going to give me £1,000 worth of credit? What's going to happen? So if you take your £100 and you put it into your bank, your new bank, and you pay your gas, electricity, your water, and, and, and your council tax, what are you going to do when you get another £100? Where are you going to put it? And bearing in mind that we're able, able to provide you with loans for cars, mortgages, interest-free, people are going to say, well, this sounds to be a pretty good system here. And the first thing people are going to say is, hang on, how does that work? Why don't they do it? And we're going to say it's because they're greedy. And that bank system is for the bankers. This bank system is for the people. So the argument is going to be, people are going to start talking about it because they're going to, they're going to start asking the question, well, if, if, if that system is, is ripping us off, why aren't our politicians supporting this system? And we'll say, because the politicians aren't working for you, they're working for the bankers. So the whole thing starts to unravel for them. And I, I promise you, even now they're starting to... to, to to, to backtrack on or not. I mean, you, you, that's why you've got people in the, in, the, in the parliament all of a sudden starting to talk about positive money, alternative monetary system. This hasn't started out of nothing. We are pushing this agenda. It's because we've been telling them about the corrupt banks that people have started to, to, to come up with the supposedly owned solutions. And it's funny, isn't it? We've been talking about this for two years now. And I, I don't recall any member of parliament ringing us and saying, can we help? 
all of a sudden you get this very impressive organization that starts to talk about a positive monetary system and you've always got a couple of MPs hanging on in there, haven't you? Right? Gatekeepers. Are they interested in changing the monetary system? No, they're not. They're just gatekeepers to, 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 to promote a system that's not going to work. If those MPs had any, any idea that they wanted to, to make a, a positive impact, they would be talking to us. That's why we know that they're not genuine. Okay? You, you look at this, this whole child business, which, which Brian has done a superb job for the last several years. How many MPs ringing up to see if they can help? Zero. And, in, and we talked about Holly Gregg and we talked about these other cases that Brian's involved in. Where are the MPs, right? 650 MPs, you've, you've, you've got one who's supposedly they're, they're representing the, 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 the parents who've lost their children. It's, it's, a, share, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a disgrace, okay? Sir? Roger, every time I click onto the computer, every time I put the television on, and every time I look at the paper, the whole world is corrupt. Yeah. You and I are probably the only two honest people on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> so, how am I, I'm going to deposit a hundred pounds in your bank. Yep. How can I trust you with that? Okay. <laughs> okay. The, the, the money itself is retired. It's not spent. It's not lent out. It's actually retired. Where it goes, I'm not going to tell you for security reasons. Okay. But what, what we can assure you is we can guarantee its safety and we can confirm its safety. Um, we have a little technique where that money goes, which if I actually told you here and now, uh, you think it was absolutely genius, and it is genius, and it's part of the strategy, and we will have a committee of people who, who will understand the mechanism, but the process that we're going through is we will slowly but surely take control of their money supply. Okay, that's all I need to tell you. So we'll have um, branches all over the country, the branches will take responsibility for the, the deposits initially. We already have a, um, a, a system in place. We already have terminals available to us. We already have cards. So I can actually put a terminal in my house. I can put a terminal in your house. And I can transfer money from my bank account to your bank account. That's available already. You, as a local branch, could therefore give cash to your customers. And I could give cash to my customers and your customers could send money to my customers and we could we could provide the cash so we can source it now the money that's that's retired for uh, cash flow for people who want to get cash flow they will go to a local retailer who have a terminal and so we'll be rely on the floats of local retailers the local retailers will earn a pound for every deposit so if you go in and you deposit 20 pounds they will be paid a, a pound fee if you deposit a hundred pounds, it would be a pound fee or a thousand pounds. So the retailers will be earning money. The, the retailers will probably earn about 50 pounds a week for offering the services. We're relying on their float to, for the cash to go in and out. Okay? So the retailers are initially responsible for the cash on deposits and providing the, the, the actual um, cash payouts. Um, the local branches will oversee the retailers. And then the actual money, the, the, the large chunks of money, won't be in one particular place. They'll, they'll, they'll be distributed at different locations. Okay. Um, so that's, that's as much as I can tell you about the money, but it will be safe. But there's another important point, is we retire their money and we bring our own money out. Yeah, and I think I mentioned that before, so we're actually releasing our own. But you said earlier on that my money is not going to gain any interest. Uh, okay. If you deposit money in our bank account, you can lend that money to other members and they and, and they will pay you interest but the bank does not earn interest the bank will earn a fee so if i if if i have a branch and i facilitate a loan to you either 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 the credit to buy something or cash from somewhere else for example if i'm going to get a mortgage the fee is 10 percent so i've got to come up with ten thousand pounds of cash yeah real cash i call it real cash from their system and you you would then, if you were, if you were borrowing that money, if you if you're borrowing 100,000 for a loan, and you didn't have that 10,000 pounds, then you can borrow it from another member, and they can earn interest. So you can, so you can earn interest, and you pay interest to other members, but not the bank. The bank just takes a fee. Okay, does that make sense? So so effectively, effectively, what you have is is you get an interest-free mortgage from the bank itself. 
But in order to, to secure that, that mortgage, you, you need to pay a fee of 10%. That, that fee of 10% comes from their system. And if you don't have the 10%, you can borrow it from a member with, within the R system. And that's where members can actually earn um, interest on their money. I'll talk to you later. I'll explain it in greater detail if I miss it right. Go on. Well, I'm assuming that the money you're going to use will be pounds sterling. Yeah, um, we, we, we use pounds sterling initially and then we retire and we replace it with our own currency, which would be, um, well, whether you call it sovereign pounds or given another name, but yes, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of pounds sterling, but it would be, it would be a different in, in terms of its design. But it equates to, it has equal value. <laughs> Good question. Would, would there be any immunity? Um, we, we all know that the euro's going to go down the long before long. Yeah. The pound will probably, well, the, the dollar definitely will follow it. Yeah. And the pound will follow it down the long afterwards. Yeah, because it's, it's a debt based currency. Ours is a, a positive liquidity. Everybody in our system will have will have cash in the bank, right? So you, got to, you ask the question, which system are they going to use? Are they going to use a system in which they owe money? Or are they going to use our system in which they got credit? So, so th there's going to be a natural transfer from their system to our system. It's not, it, it's not an action that happens on one day, it's a process. And that proce process happens when we got enough people signed up to the lawful bank or to other banks, okay? So the question I've got is that if, if, if their pounds become worthless, yeah. Does that mean that your pounds will become worthless? No, because you you because everybody is going to need a means of exchange. Yeah? And if you've got money in the bank, you've got something to exchange. Okay? But if their system is based on debt and it collapses, there is no money. Okay, so you you've got a negative situation You're with, with their system. Hey? You're selling the infrastructure. Yes, that's all that's all it is. It's yeah, exactly. So go on. Is it realistic to expect, if this is successful, which I believe will be, that it will bankrupt the Bank of England? Um, I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I... Yeah. Well, you know, there are certain areas which I don't really want to get into. The bottom line is that we're going to have a system in which everybody who's a member of our system is going to have a positive bank balance yeah we're going to have positive liquidity if their system fails don't blame me okay it's not my fault i didn't set that system up we're just talking about an alternative system that has benefits for the people if they want to do something decent how about them create their system that benefits the people and not greedy bankers okay sir so, Yes, I'd just like to clarify my name um, the last time you made it, just to clarify one or two points. First of all, this gentleman has actually answered one of the two questions that was asked. You will be adopting British sterling system currency at the moment. Yes, that, okay. yeah. The, question, the main point of the question I was going to ask is, if you're going to set up a, a series of independent banks called the Royal Bank, would you not have to be come under the auspices of any regulatory body like the Financial Services Authority? <laughs> would have to impose... Uh, okay, the, this is why it's important to understand what money is. That with the, the, the point in time that we launch our bank is when we have the, the members, the critical mass of members that can bring to the system the resources. Okay, now that's the first point. That's a very important point because we are expecting members to trade with each other using the currency that we create. The idea of bringing £100 from their system to our system is that will give us the initial cash flow which we can use in the shops, okay? So it gives us cash in, in, our, in our pockets. Now, their system has 3% of cash available. Our system will have 10%, yeah? So the £1,000 is positive liquidity. It's, 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 it's only, 
its function is to allow us to exchange between us. Okay, that, that's the important thing. So when you say where does it come from, it literally is created from nothing, in exactly the same way as they create money from nothing. Because the purpose of money is just to provide a mechanism by which we can start to trade with each other. Yeah? So it's the resources that are important, not the money. The money has no real value. It's only the resources. Yeah? And I, I, I do understand that this whole concept takes a bit of getting around to it. People say, where does the money come from? And when you say, well, it, it comes from, literally, you create it from nothing because it's only there to eat, to, to, to admit the, the, the trade of, of, of uh, resources. I'll give you an example. I mean, if I knit woolen sweaters, right, over the winter, I'd be selling them. But over the summer, I won't. Okay? So during the summer, when I want to buy my lettuce, I'm going to be giving IOUs to people. So an IOU is money. So I'm going to handing all these IOUs to these people to buy the letters. And come the winter, when they want sweaters, they're going to be bringing me IOUs back, aren't they? And, and I'll be giving them the sweaters in exchange for the IOUs that I gave to them for the letters during the summer. So the money was created out for nothing. But because of the delay in, in, the, in the, our different commodities, I'm requiring to borrow money in the summer. And I get the cash flow back in the winter. So the money itself is not of any value, is it? What's of value is the letters and the sweaters. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, like everyone here, I'm sure, can agree with like, this uh, bank that you're talking about, it's beneficial for everybody. But uh, how, is, how easy is it to sign up to this group? Or um, the lawforbank.com, you just put your name on there. And, and that's the mechanism by which we communicate with you. That's the mechanism by which we sort of, we, 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 if you feed the, 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 the concept, how it works, etc. Because obviously, it, it's, it, there's a lot of it, other issues attached to it. Um, I th was there, there, was a, there was a question, part of your question I didn't answer. I, I can't remember what it was now, but th there's so many different aspects of banking. And we've covered them all, but I may not explain them all tonight. But, but through, that, uh, through that website, you, you'll get the, the, the details uh, emailed to you. So that... You just literally sign up, it doesn't cost anything.